With me now, Ryan Lizza, chief political correspondent for Esquire and a CNN political analyst, and Shan Wu, a former federal prosecutor and a CNN legal analyst. Good to see both of you. Good to see you, Fred. And Shan, first off, I know you recently lost your dad. Our condolences to you and your family. Uh, our thoughts are with you. Oh, thanks, Fred. I appreciate that. So, Shan, let me ask you uh, then first, you know, is it likely that Michael Cohen, you know, will provide this new and credible testimony to, you know, help shed light on some of the questions surrounding the Russia investigation and, and President Trump? I think he will provide a more credible testimony this time around because he knows what he can be confronted with uh, just how much new light it'll shed, I think is really questionable. I don't think that much, certainly not in the public uh, testimony. Mm -hmm. I think even in the private testimony, he's gonna be constrained by any ongoing investigations or any ongoing prosecutions. Mm -hmm. So I think it will provide some satisfaction and some corroboration, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's gonna shed too much new light on those issues. I think it could shed a lot of light on potentially damaging other kinds of issues with regard to the Trump organization mm -hmm. and even to the Trump family. Financial dealings. Uh, so Ryan, you know, his credibility, Cohen's credibility is constantly being uh, challenged. Yeah. But um, he also reportedly knows more than just about anybody, having been in Trump's you know, orbit, his financial dealings for at least the last 10 years. Um, will credibility still be an issue for him? Yeah, I think that's a great point. Whenever you have um, a, a witness like this whose main uh, crimes have, have been that he, um, he, he lied, um, you're going to have that issue. So I think it's going to be important for him, whatever he says, especially anything that is a, a dramatic accusation or dramatic revelation about uh, the president or the Trump organization, that he show his work, right? Mm -hmm. That he um, either through uh, documentation or uh, he has some way of backing up uh, what he's saying. On the other hand, you know, he lied in those other situations um, because he had he believed he had some incentive to lie, I, I suppose. He is going to jail now. Um, he certainly does not want to lie to Congress again. <laughs> um, so, you know, and so far what we've seen from him is someone who is frankly chastened and mm -hmm. I, I think to a certain, certain degree is trying to turn things around mm -hmm. and, his, and re restore his credibility. But you're, you're right, you know, it's like a, a trust but verify situation. Right, because it seems, you know, Shan, if, if if any of those who were trying to play psychologist on, t on TV or, or anywhere, you know, the lying was more a testament to the loyalty, right, of, of the two. Right. But then now there doesn't seem to be any loyalty, you know, and if there was, it's a, it, it's a one-way street now. And so there is very little incentive, right, Chan, for, yeah. um, you know, Michael Cohen, I guess, to lie again. That's absolutely right. If anything, the incentive has really gone the other way now. Mm -hmm. I mean, by coming forth and looking very credible, he's in a better position to help himself, even potentially down the road with the motion to reduce mm -hmm. his sentence. And no matter what, this is just going to be terribly negative for the president. I mean, even mm -hmm. in the best of light, even the most restrictive testimony, mm -hmm. it's just going to be very negative for him. And really, you know, we speculate a lot about the Mueller probe winding down as the end of the beginning for Mueller. I mean, this is really... Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is really the start of a lot of beginnings um, mm. of troubles for the Trump administration. Mm. Today, uh, Congressman Adam Schiff, you know, who, who chairs the House Intel Committee, says he will sue the Trump administration and use whatever legal options he has to make sure the Mueller, the Robert Mueller report, is made public after it goes to the U.S. Attorney General uh, Bob Barr. Listen. We will obviously subpoena the report. Uh, we will bring Bob Mueller in to testify before Congress. We will take it to court if necessary. Uh, and in the end, I think the department understands they're going to have to make this public. Uh, I think Barr will ultimately understand that as well. Barr comes into this job with two strikes against him. Uh, he applied for the job by demonstrating a bias against the Mueller investigation. Indeed, that's part of the reason he was hired. Uh, he's also not been willing to commit to following the advice of ethics lawyers. Indeed, that was part of the reason he was hired. Uh, if he were to try to withhold, to try to bury any part of this report, that will be his legacy, and it will be a tarnished legacy. So I think there will be immense pressure not only on the department but on the attorney general to be forthcoming. All right, so um, the attorney general, Bill Barr. So, Shan, you know, can the Democrats use, you know, a subpoena to make the special counsel report public and, and force Robert Mueller, you know, to testify? 
I think they can certainly force Mueller to testify, and then there'll be a lot of fights about what he can testify to, just as there will be fights over any other witnesses they subpoena. I think on the pure legal question of can they somehow compel the full report to be disclosed, I think that's a tough one. And I also think that Barr has a lot of shields that he can use to stand behind not to release it fully. Basically, this notion he doesn't want to pull a Comey, that he wants to make sure negative information doesn't come out, that there's no actual criminal charging. So I think that's going to be a tough road to hoe. But I think they can produce a lot of information um, through investigation. So, Ryan, you know, yeah. what, what are the political consequences for Republicans in the Trump administration if, indeed, it, the attorney general decides not to make the Mueller report public, you know, not being yeah. transparent with the American people, the American voters leading up to another election? Yeah. Well, first of all, it, it depends on what the report says. Mm. If for any reason it um, is not that incriminating, especially of the president and, the, and Trump himself believes that it's in his interest to have this report out, you better believe that it will become public, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the, that will determine part of the administration's response is how damning is the report. Um, but secondly, I think, uh, you know, the Comey precedent is one that a lot of Democrats will be citing, right? Mm -hmm. Is that it, it, normally you... Uh, the Justice Department, if, say if it doesn't indict someone, uh, they don't want to get too deep into the weeds publicly of the of the investigative work that went into it. Mm -hmm. But we saw with Hillary Clinton, everything was eventually given over to Congress. And even though she wasn't indicted, there was lots of information from the investigation that was um, bad for her and created a lot of uh, negative mm -hmm. news stories uh, in her in her run. So. The Democrats will cite that and demand that the same standard apply to mm -hmm. the Mueller investigation. So even if there aren't bombshell mm -hmm. uh, pieces to this report, the Democrats are going to want everything and they're going to cite mm -hmm. the Comey precedent. All right, we'll leave it there. Ryan, Liz, Shan Wu, good to see you both. Thank Thanks you so much. Thanks, Fred.